Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. If you missed it a couple weeks back, we released a video on what is going to be my pack for 2023. I took a deep dive. I looked at all the packs I've used over the years and where I think they have really good use cases and where I didn't like them. This video might be useful if you guys or girls are looking for a pack for the next season. Click up here if you want to check out that video out on a deep dive. Spoiler alert, I've chosen the Freestone Backpack to be my pack for 2023. And yes, I'm joining Team Backpack. In this video, we're going to be looking at what I put inside that pack. Now, if you're considering the Freestone, check it out because I got some really cool hacks on the Freestone specifically that I think are going to make this pack just about perfect for what I'm looking for. But if you're not considering the Freestone, if you're not joining Team Backpack, don't worry if you got a sling, a hip pack, a backpack, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go over what I have in my pack in this when I'm out on the water guiding or personal fishing. And I hope that some of the suggestions might make your days out on the water a little bit safer and a little bit more enjoyable. As always, you wanna see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get in to see what's in this pack. All right, here it is, the pack I am going to be using for 2023. What we're gonna to do today is look at what I've got for tools, for fishing gear that I cannot leave home without. We're also gonna look at some essentials that I recommend you carry, even if this isn't your pack. And heck, if you are getting the Freestone backpack, I think it's a great one, and I am gonna show you some tricks that I've learned to make this a little bit more convenient for at least my fishing use case. So let's start off with the outside first and a couple of things you might see here that are a little different. The first one is these two little toggles. Uh, these are fishing butlers, but they're fishing butlers that are longer than your standard. I wanna say they're seven inch or eight inch. And what that's gonna allow me to do hooked into this little loop here on the side of the Freestone pack is I can carry extra rods. Now. For most people, you don't need to do this, but when I'm guiding, having a backup rod is essential. And when I'm personal fishing, it's pretty common I'll bring two rods. Uh, I'll bring a spay rod and maybe a bull trout rod. I'll bring a float fishing rod and maybe a spinning rod. And this is a really convenient way to do it with a lot of packs, as long as you have a loop. It's not too expensive. These cost like three bucks, but we've got our water bottle holder on the side. I'm not gonna use it for a water bottle holder. All we need to do is loop that through there and jam that in there and tighten her up. And then boom, we've got a rod. It ain't gonna fall off. I can even have this fully strung. We're definitely rigged in four pieces so that I can quickly change to whatever it is. Now, one note for those considering this pack, the water bottle holder is on your left-hand side and that is awesome for right-handed casters, not so awesome for left-handed casters, uh, but just a note if you're considering this in your lefty. So here it is, and I'm gonna pop that out so it doesn't get in our way, but you can see how quick that is to run a second rod. And if this were rigged, I'd be in the game. So two of those, I can literally stick two rods in there depending on the real size. Now, over on to the back. Let's talk about this pocket that I've been debating. If you guys saw my earlier video, I'm not sure how I'm gonna use this, but I think I've figured it out. I think I'm gonna use this for my water bottle. And what do I carry as a water bottle? This is a grail. So this guy is cool. It works as a water bottle normally, uh, but if you pop it open, I think I can pull that open. This acts like a filter and it actually looks like I need to do a little cleaning on this guy, but we can fill this up with uh, river water, pop this on, filter it down nice and slowly. Takes a little bit, you gotta work on it. I'm gonna leave that off to the side, but we can at least get drinkable water. Now you don't have to do that every time, you can just fill it up and use it as a standard water bottle, and that's what I do for most scenarios. Uh, but I like it, it's a small one, it's not too heavy, it's not a big one. Now, net release. This is critical. This is the fish pond one. It's the confluence. I think it's the best. I've tried a few. They work. Uh, when you're putting on, it's a little counterintuitive. Separate the two apart. Get the magnet that has the lanyard on it. Use the keychain on here on your D-ring with the magnet right there. There's your lanyard. And what I love about this is this fast release. Some of them are not fast release like this. You have to sort of put the net on and everything and you can't get the net off you. But here's my net and all we need to do is this uh, rubber piece here. Uh, clips on there, 
and we're in the game. We've got the net hooked up and boom, it's there and it's strong. I moved this over from my other pack. I really like it. And why do I really like it? Well, the biggest one for me is to take the net off of the lanyard. And what do I mean by that? Well, we pop it out, we land our fish. Now we want to hand it to our buddy. We want to keep that fish in the water. We want to keep the net in the water where we're looking for gear, where we're looking for a camera, heck, where we're looking for forceps. And all I have to do is reach up here, pop this, and we're off and I can pass that net off or I can hold it while I'm dickering around and it's not connected. I don't know how many times I've literally had to like take off the sling or fiddle around with something that isn't convenient to get the net off so we can keep the fish in the water. So I love that. This isn't a net video, but a couple things that I do with my net that might be useful to you is uh, I put a thermometer on it. And it's super funny. I always forget to take water temperatures and it's Something that can be fairly good if you're good at taking records, you can figure out how a system works and why something is happening when it's happening. And maybe I'm out on the schedule and there's a hatch happening. I never remember to take the temperature, but that's a useful thing to gauge because you can tell sort of where things happen when it comes to bugs. And obviously for steelhead, there's certain temperatures where it's almost a waste of time. And there's certain temperatures where you may go with a lighter sink tip and cover more water than a heavy sink tip. And this just reminds me to take it when it's out there and it's easy. I can pop the net off, literally stuff the net underwater. I've got something to hold on to so I'm not putting my uh, hand in the freezing cold water get our temperature. Now the other thing I have is I do have a tape measure uh, because we all like to exaggerate and this keeps me honest. When someone says oh that's a 28 inch rainbow and we all know it's actually 26 at least I'll have something to gauge. And this guy retracts he's a little old but it works well for that and it's handy. Again you don't go for the tape when you have the fish in the net. Why? Because we want to get those fish back released safely as quickly as possible and so having it quick at hand when you need it where you need it is critical. So that's my net setup. I'm going to put that aside. Uh, okay, what else do I got uh, on the outside? Let's talk tools. So well, on the go, and this pack is super light. Like I've got a fair amount of stuff in here and it's way more steady on my body. And as you guys know from my last video, that's why I'm going this route is because I don't carry that much stuff. I try to stay lean and mean. I don't like being a GI Joe on the river with about a billion things hanging off me. But when I'm guiding or maybe I'm taking photos, I do carry a little bit more than normal. And this is going to give me a really good balance with that metal stay that we've talked about. So what do we got for tools? Well, on my left hand side, I've got my two essentials. These are the ones you need at hand really quick. First off, I am a member of the way too expensive line clipping club. I totally recommend nail clippers for three bucks, but this Sims one is nice and it does make me smile every time I cut line with it. It's been really sharp for me, really clean. It's got a couple little features that I do like, a couple creature comforts. It's got a hook line clearer and it is magnetic. So when it lashes onto my forceps, which I do have on the same thing, it sort of stays without clanking around, which I like. Now, forceps. These are actually mitten clamps, which is a little bit different than a forcep, and I strongly recommend mitten clamps. What is a mitten clamp? Well, see, it's got this loop to it. The wonder of this is, you know, standard forceps, you have to fight and sort of open them. This, all we have to do is crunch down and it opens up really cleanly. It's easy, it's out of the way, there's no forcing it. The other thing I recommend, whether it's forceps or a mitten clamp, is get the one with a cutter in it. So this is like a small scissor cutter right at the base. And I don't know how many times I've been trimming up a fly or a jig or fly line needed to be cut and nippers work, but it's not as good and clean as that. And this line cutter is coming handy a lot. Now, one caveat, if you're fishing large hooks, you're a saltwater guy, uh, you're out doing heavy salmon work with like three aught, four aught, five aught, six aught hooks. When you put the scissor cutter in you, you lose some barb chomping power. Now for me, that's not a big deal. I very rarely use large hooks. If I'm saltwater fishing, I have a pair of pliers on my hip. And so this works great for, I'd say anything one aught and down and you're in the game. So those live handy where I can get to them. I can get to the fish, get the hook out or get the barbs out or heck, get them out of my buddy. Now I can clip that in. That goes up into the Sims tool caddy and we're in the game. Now on the other side, I do have another one. Which zingers do I use? That's a good question. I love the fish pond one. It's a little more expensive. It's on this set. It's aluminum. I've actually got another one in the pack. It's held up amazing for me. This one's like six years old. I've beaten the snot out of it. I've stretched the heck out of it and it's done well. This is the Sims one. This is more cost effective and good. I don't think they are as durable, but you get what you pay for. This one has something I use way less, but I still want at hand. And what is that? Well, that's my hook file. 
There is nothing worse than looking down at your hook going, that's a little bit dull, and then being too lazy to go into your pack and get out your hook file. So this lives with me really close, easy access. I don't have to think about it. Grab it if a hook is even remotely dull and it sticks right in there so it's not flapping around. Here is my fly patch. And I will tell you gear anglers that you'd probably like a fly patch as well. I see it all the time. There's a uh, piece of Velcro here and that does work. You can put stuff into the Velcro, but you are going to lose stuff out of that. Buying one of these fly patches, popping it on, work it in like that to keep it to stay. And once they're there, they very rarely come off when you don't want them to. And when I'm float fishing, for example, I'll have maybe a jig or a Colorado blade, a change up right here so I don't have to go into my pack to make a quick change or flip it around when I'm fly fishing. I definitely have a pattern or two up here that I can make a quick change to where I don't have to think about it. And this keeps them from falling off. So grab one of those, highly recommended. Now, that's our front. Let's go to the back. So I'm gonna pop off this side and around we go. Now, this is why I got this pack. Why? Because I hate backpacks. I will not use backpacks that I can't get into when I'm standing in the water, meaning I will not go to shore to deal with my gear. I need to have quick access to them and I don't want to take a pack off my back and walk away from it. If you guys saw the earlier video I did, I did have some concerns, some mild, let's call them Goldilocks moments where I wanted it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. There are certain things that I thought Sim should have done to this pack. The first one was that this is a fairly big area and I didn't want to just turn it into a sort of an, a bottomless pit of stuff rolling around in here. So I did a little research, took a little looking, and yes, I turned to Amazon. Found an item that works absolutely perfectly for this. Now, I'm going to leave links down to this item. This is not an affiliate link. I'm not going to get paid, but Amazon is darn useful for solving very niche problems. And this one, I think I've got solved. So, roll it out. First off, I've got Uncle John's tippet holder uh, made of paracord and a very cool diamond knot. And this is going to hold my Maxima. I'll keep it on one because it keeps it all out of the way. As we know, when we're steelhead fishing, Maxima is king. And I don't need to go through a million tippets. I just need one or two. Now, on the other side, I do have uh, my head gate holder, which I love. I love this tippet holder right here. Got another one of them right here. So you can see it. That hooks in. This has got my more finicky stuff, my fluorocarbons, my lighter stuff. Let's say I'm bull trout fishing or I'm nymphing. This is where I go, but it's used less this time of year when it comes to stealing, but I still throw it in because you never know. But here, I don't know if you guys can see, is the trump card. Picked up these guys. This is a camera bag insert. They were like 22 bucks, 23 bucks, I think, on Amazon. They're pretty darn rigid. They match in color, which I was excited about. They don't have a top, which I like. I didn't want a top. They do come with a Velcro top that you can pop on there if you wanted to keep it covered, but in this pack, I'm not gonna use it. Now, I've got two sizes. I've got the large in here. I'm gonna show you guys those in a second, but these are great for organizing our gear so we don't have an endless pit. I'm gonna talk about what's in that in a second, but before I get there, I'm gonna zip this back up. And I want to show you some of my key essential stuff that I won't leave home without that maybe aren't purely fishing related. Then we'll get into the specific fishing stuff. So the first one is uh, the fly. The fly that comes with this pack is cool. It lives down here. Now, the bottom of this pack has this really cool little compartment in it. And I've turned this into my, oh good God, things have gone badly pocket. First off, it started to rain. I've got my fly, so I can pull that out. That goes on uh, over the pack. That's great. What else? Well, here I have the first aid kit. And I don't know how many times I've seen anglers go out without a first aid kit. You don't need a big one, but this can make your life exponentially better. This is the Adventure Medical Kit. Very small, but I've added some stuff to this that you may want to consider. I am not a medical professional, but like I said, this is my, oh gosh, things have gone wrong. And it's, oh gosh, things have gone wrong with my gear as well. And I put it all in one place, just so it's all there. The first one uh, that's a little bit different is I put tip tops, rod tip tops and glue in here. So if I break a rod or I break myself, this is where I'm going. And the trick with tip tops, what are they? I'll hold them up here for you, is you snap off the tip of your rod, your day is almost ruined. This hot glue, lighter, and a tip top, boom, you can get in the game really quickly. Trick is take big tip tops. Get one for like a big salmon rod, 
as well as some smaller ones. That way if you break the rod quite a ways down, maybe a foot or two off, you can slip on that big guide to fit that scenario. I carry three or four in here. I actually need to add a few because it has saved rods for clients in the last couple trips. And uh, I don't know how many times I've tip topped a rod that's lost like an inch. And I come back to it three years later forgetting that I tip topped it and it has done absolutely nothing to change the way the rod casts. So easy to get back in the game. The other things that are a little different here and this one I highly recommend, there is a joke about having a shitty guide, and uh, I've been that shitty guide a few times, pardon my French, uh, but put a modium in your kit. I don't know how many times I've been out with clients, and I look over, and the guy's got this weird look on his face. I'm like, you okay? He's like, no, my tummy's off. A modium won't fix it, but it'll certainly make the situation better, and you can get through a day or get back to civilization before things go badly. So a modium lives in here. The other thing that lives in here is duct tape, and... I have painkillers and these are these little capsules. I picked them up at dollar stores. They're like 50 cents a piece. They work perfectly for a few different pills that you might put in there. And if you guys notice, I've got red ones and I've got clear ones. The red ones are Tylenol. The clear ones are Advil. Why do I carry both? Well, the red ones are good for blood, meaning they don't make you bleed out. Again, I'm not a medical professional. I take no responsibility for a mistake made with medications, uh, but Advil is for at least my purposes, better for hangovers. So if I had a few with the boys the night before, I break out the Advil. If something else is going on, I break out the Tylenol and I have both of them and it reminds me that it is there. What else is in this? Well, probably one of the more important things and that I have used uh, is this little EDC flashlight. I don't see it there without everything falling out, but this guy is called an Aurora. It's about 30 bucks, it's rechargeable, and it's super bright, and it gets me out of a lousy situation or a good fishing situation. I don't know how many times I've been on a river and the hatch is going off and I stay a little bit later than planned. Sure, I could carry a headlamp. Sure, I could carry a flashlight, but I, I tend to never do it. I always forget. And having this is great. And I have actually had times I've been out and I have a headlamp and a buddy comes out and we get jammed up. We stay a little bit later than expected. And he's like, I don't have a headlamp. I don't have a flashlight. Well, I give him this. He's got something to see where his feet are. And I've got the headlamp and we can get out without a concern. So that is my med kit. Now there's one other thing, actually two other things that I do throw in the backside. Holy crap pouch. First one is uh, emergency blanket. I have used one of these. I had to sleep under a boat when a plane didn't pick me up. It sucked. It wasn't good, but it was better to have this than nothing at all. And it's very, very light and easy. And last but not least, I do carry a tourniquet. Now, many people may think this is overkill, but I had an experience as a young man where me and a buddy were running through uh, a forest and he slipped and he took a sharp stick that was coming up from a tree trunk right into the inside of his leg. It literally took out a Big Mac sized chunk of meat from the inside of his leg and it got his artery and the blood was horrendous. We had no clue what to do, we were young. And uh, luckily we got it in our heads to use a sweatshirt to tie off his leg and it probably saved his life. He was be bleeding profusely. It took us 15, 20 minutes to get back to camp. And at that point, it took another 45 minutes to get to a hospital. And though I've never had to use it since, I saw that and it's such an easy thing to fix a massive problem to get you back. When you're out fishing, you aren't gonna get to a hospital in 20 minutes. It's going to be an hour, if not multiple hours. I have this in here because I just don't want to be using a sweatshirt or something hokey in that situation. I want something that's gonna work. So there's my tourniquet. Okay, that's the safety side of stuff. Now let's go up to the everyday use stuff, the stuff that uh, we all want to have. And this is where I keep my snacks. I'm not going to go into detail there. Uh, I've got some cliff bars. I've got some protein bars. I do have my hand warmers because I'm a complete sissy. And when I'm steel heading and my hands get cold, I hate it. Uh, I got some wipe downs. Um, I'm not a germaphobe, but it is. It's nice to be able to wipe down when your hands get dirty. I love these. These are a shout. These are honey stingers, chewables, and uh, this is kind of like a coffee in a gummy. Uh, and it's not going to get you jittery. It's not over the top like an energy drink. But you know that day at like two o'clock, you haven't hooked any fish. You're getting a little down on life. I pop one of these in, and I'm back in the game. And so, highly recommended honey stingers and these guys. What is this? This is called a WYSIWYPE. 
It's basically a pill that you got to put a little bit of water on and it opens up into a big, fairly durable cloth. Uh, I think you get like 20 of them in here. I go through at least one of these a season and this is my toilet paper. This is my wipe down. This is a very, very useful and small thing. It's not much to put this in any pack and you don't have to carry a big spool of toilet paper, etc. You know you've got it. So that lives there, super useful. Okay, so that is the sort of comforts. And I put that right at the top because I want to get to them quick and I don't want to have to think about it. Now, a little less comfort, but uh, still useful is this top pouch. It's got a cool key ring in here. I might put my keys in there. I don't particularly like putting keys in a pack because I don't want to lose it. This is the stuff that's a little more rarely used. First one is sunscreen. I always forget to put on sunscreen. Even in the winter, it gets sunny and I am fairly pale. And the joke is I take my shirt off and the sun comes out and I get burnt really easily. This is 50 SPF. This is the fish pond stuff. And why do I like it in a stick? Well, I don't want to get it all over my hands and get it all greasy and get it on flies and get it on stuff. I also want to do it quickly so I can reach in, grab this, put it on where it's needed, throw it in. And this one's lasted me a long time. I've had this for four or five years and I use it a ton. Uh, so highly recommended. What else I got? Well, I got another lighter and a roll of duct tape around the lighter. Uh, again, useful. And I got some fire starter. It's nice to have a fire on the side of the river when things do get cold. And this makes it a little bit easier. You can also use duct tape as fire starter if you don't want to go that route. Uh, but there we go. Now, in this pack, the way I have it set up, I can also fit a puffy, a jacket, and a lunch. Obviously small, uh, but if I were just to carry one piece of clothing, it would be a hat. Shout out to these guys, they gave this to me last week, but I've got a toque like this in every single one because it's one thing we can do to keep warmth on our head. And that's one of the easiest ways we lose heat in either a safety situation or just make your life a little less miserable. So my toque lives there. Okay, that's all the boring stuff. That's all the stuff that I definitely carry uh, when I'm out, no matter what fishing I do. But let's take a look at what I'm going to be carrying for steelhead season. So we already talked about John's lanyard. We've got uh, maximum. I like to carry uh, 8 pound, 10 pound, and 12 pound. 8 pounds more a bull trout thing. 10 pound is sort of in the middle and 12 pound is your steelhead size. Uh, why do I carry maxima? It's really durable. When I'm swinging a fly, I don't care if it's clear. Uh, this is what I use. I won't go into a rant there. Now on this side, I carry a full stack. Uh, for nymphing specifically, but you never know what you're going to need. I'm not going to go into which I carry. You guys get the drift there. Now, in here in my wonderful divider, I do have another tool set and I've got another pair of forceps and this is much heavier duty for bigger barbs, for bigger cutting uh, or a nasty situation. And then I have uh, my nail knot tool. Again, this is darn useful for fixing loops on fly lines, doing knots that are a little bit more complicated than you are planning for. And so that lives in there because it's nice to have when you're guiding and nice to have if you're just out and you need to fix some problems. Uh, okay, what else now have I got? Well, let's take a peek at what I carry fly box wise. I'm not going to open these and show you what's in them. This is my bull trout box. This is a streamer box that's going to have uh, tractor style streamer patterns, sculpin style streamer patterns, my go-to whites and olives. Then I'm going to have my steelhead kit. Now, I don't carry a ton of steelhead flies. I have a bunch that are very specific, but this is all I need for a day of guiding or personal fishing. And it, I love this thing. It's an old one. It's a Wheatley box, but it's got a flap in here and that allows me to keep some trailer hooks. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that holds my trailer hooks. This holds my flies. It's kind of dilapidated. I need to load it up and away we go. Now, I also carry a leaderboard especially if I'm gear fishing, this is going to have it on, or I've got clients that are, but usually I have my beads all pre-rigged on this. This one also needs to be loaded, but you get the idea. Uh, and I have my indicator split shot, uh, Euro nymphing slash indicator fishing kit here, just your bare essentials. So that's easy. Then I've got a leader kit. These are awesome. Real still makes them fold over, put all your leaders in it. Why not have them with you? I don't use a ton of tapered leaders this time of year, but it's useful to have in a pinch. And lastly, my sink tip wallet. And I don't carry a ton of sink tips. If you guys see my sink tip video, I'll put it up here if you want to geek out on sink tips. But I usually carry a light sink tip, so a clear intermediate in a 10 foot. I carry a T8, which I use sometimes. I carry two T11s because that's where I fish a fair amount. And then I carry a T14. If I'm Chinook fishing, I'll step up to a 17, maybe even a 20, uh, but not for winter steelhead. All right, so that is my pack for steelhead season in 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you saw some stuff that you're going to put in your pack that might make you a little more safe, 
a little bit more efficient out on the river. And heck, if you guys and girls saw something that is not in here that you have in your pack that you would not leave home without, I want to hear about it because I'm sure I can tweak this. I'm sure I can make it a little bit better. And if you want to see a review on this Freestone pack, why I chose it, a deep dive, I geek out pretty hard on all the different packs that are available, the ones that I love and why I chose this one, I'm going to leave that video up here. And if you guys want to see some stuff that's in those fly boxes, I'm going to leave some fly videos down here. And as always, you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next one.